the eighth chapter these people believe in nothing it makes them so much easier to conquer the godless have nothing to prove deicide with each new sector of the city cleared the 203rd heavy infantry were met with less and less opposition brief skirmishes with injured soldiers left behind or outright deserters clustered together to form small gangs for survival they had even come across an abandoned fossa baby factory that had become a source of food for the stranded soldiers it was assumed that the tanks growing the fetuses had all been evacuated but they had already seen how quickly war had come to this place repeated dialogue with command simply told the women to push further into the city none of them could fight the feeling that at any moment they would be caught in an elaborate ambush but the tanks kept rolling with her visor up fawn craned her neck up to look at the sky not a helo stray jet or single bird for weeks not even a spy drone had been spotted since the tour began she thumbed through her mission briefings on her handheld unit not expecting to find anything useful but it was always good habit to check then she looked back up to the sky a dark gray she could smell the water in the air this place was so dry that a short time earlier your eyelids had to work overtime to keep your peepers moist she turned back to gazelle and then pointed up it'll come eventually just be thankful gazelle said fawn shrugged and turned back to the front it was then that a confused voice came over the open channel we're on the south quarter there's a bunch of mist thicker than hell a woman said on the calm channel there's people coming out of it might have refugees wait i, th I think we got weapons what the fuck the fucking sword holy shit they cut the barrel off a tank the voice said there was machine gun fire heard on the open channel and then it echoed from their position immediately the tanks rushed to the south quarter screams and the sound of warping metal filled the calm channel as they approached the scene they fanned out and the tanks came from different side streets fawn and her fire team jumped from the tank and got in position the clouds overhead looked like a churning black soup then the rain came down the moisture could not cover the smell of ozone in the air fawn assumed something must have been struck by lightning she could feel an energy moving through the air and muffled footsteps against the pavement she peeked around the corner to find several men and women in black form-fitting suits and shiny black faceplates they were amazingly muscled a few of them held black blades each raindrop that hit the blades fizzled into vapor with their strange equipment she could see that they were not fossas and wondered if they were human at all their huge back muscles and the mechanism running vertically down their spines made them appear slightly hunchback from the building behind them more and more blade-wielding soldiers began to spill into the street she wondered what type of vehicle could hold so many personnel then down the alley that she was facing she saw the reality warp before her revealing the insides of a massive ship men and women in tight gray suits and transparent face places were being screamed at by a tall woman making hand signals to a man on the other side of the portal their gray suits became a sooty color and their face plates blackened to the resemblance of a smooth obsidian giving them the look of black soulless mannequins they raised their fingers above their heads and then dove into the hole in this reality fawn's blood pressure shot up and her teeth began to ache as she raised her weapon engaging gazelle said hot brass began to spill out of the side of the turret the deathless she managed to hit seemed to shrug off the 50 caliber bullets fawn fired a grenade into the charging group she watched as they all dispersed immediately the outermost leapt laterally to the walls of the buildings those behind vaulted over the explosive while those in front immediately dove into a roll the screams and the sound of gunfire kept fawn from believing she was taking part in such extravagant ballet every movement of these dark soldiers looked rehearsed fawn watched as they unsheathed the black blades from the scabbards riding their spines an electric buzz seared through the air and the smell of ozone became apparent once more she watched as they sliced clean through her allies weapons ballistic vests and their cavities in between even the smallest of the soldiers overpowered the allies easily fawn witnessed a woman stiff arm a tank stopping it outright as it tried to cross through the intersection 
the tank could get no traction against the woman and was soon swarmed by other black mannequins that quickly hacked it to pieces. The strength of these alien soldiers seemed to be wildly varied. Most seemed to be incapable of running in a straight line, while others possessed the strength to bend steel like taffy. It seemed those that were superior had colored loops hanging at the sides of their waists. Gazelle screamed from the turret. They're moving fast, she said. Farn could see all of their movements clearly now, knowing just what they would do before they actually did it. She adjusted her aim accordingly. She lifted her toy box and began to lead her newfound target. She watched as a grenade knocked back a man into the alley behind him. Then Fletcher fired the penny black, divorcing a man's head from his shoulders. Fawn could see a black-clad woman was on a path to collide with her. With a few quick movements, the toy box became a laser saw. Fawn rammed it into the chest of their pursuer, bursting the top layer of the breastplate of the suit. Black fluid splattered across Fawn's face, and her laser had been extinguished. Unable to burn through the black ooze that covered the laser's eye, the tank fired the main gun at the warp in reality. The shell exploded prematurely inside what looked to be some kind of cubical force field. Within this field was a figure that seemed to be looking directly at Fawn. Fletcher caused another head to be popped off from one of the soldiers. Fawn had just noticed that Chittle and Lechway were screaming. Fawn converted the toy box into a machine gun, firing through the faceplate of the soldier that had leapt onto the tank. They watched as the bullets failed to pierce the surface of the smooth black mask. Then the head of the black-clad soldier vanished, removed by Fletcher's EP rifle, seemingly the only weapon that was effective against the unknown force. A woman not far from him opened her faceplate. Recruit! Back on the ship, the woman said. Her kinky, reddish-brown hair framed her tan and freckled face. She walked forward and kicked the armless man in the rear as she scowled and screamed at the rest of the apparently junior personnel. Dearborn, let's go! Gazelle yelled from the tank. A bedlam surrounded Fawn. She hopped onto the tank and grabbed hold as it immediately reversed. Her eyes were locked with a small, wild-haired woman. She had a toothy grin on her face that Fawn wanted to carve out. As the tank soared backward, they saw the rest of their division attempting a retreat. Weaving in and out of tanks, that had been split in half or twisted into some abstract art. Fawn began firing on the soldiers who were in pursuit. The penny black went off again next to her, and she looked over to Fletcher's mask of stone. An enemy had leapt from a side street and onto the tank. He brought the black blade down on Gazelle's head repeatedly and began to amateurishly hack at the rest of the tank in short, ineffective chops. As Fawn rose up, she dragged a knife from her hip, and with impeccable strength, she brought the blade up into the deathless soldier's armpit. Unable to pierce the tough suit, she ducked underneath his wild swing, and then she pushed him from the tank. As Fawn tried to radio command on her antlers, she saw that there were similar soldiers, like the tiny woman she had just saw. All of them had colored ribbons hanging from their waist. All were not actively engaging in the battle. Instead, they were berating the soldiers that had no ribbons. Fawn was enraged. These are booters, she thought watching the shoulder she had just tried to gut shouted down by his superiors. She saw that the soldiers they actually could kill made no evasive maneuvers. They charged immediately without a thought for their own survival, as if they were mindless drones. Fawn shot a glance to Fletchit. Hit her, Fawn said, pointing to the freckled-faced soldier. The rest of you get inside, she said. Letchway quickly got down below. Gazelle's body was pushed to the top of the tank, where it hung between the turret and gear housing rising out of the top. Copy, Fletcher said, immediately zeroing in on the woman's skull. Her faceplate was up. The woman fired. As soon as it had, the petite woman was on the tank, kicking the barrel of the EP rifle upward. Fletcher rolled to the other side of the tank. The woman snatched the rifle as it twirled in midair and booted Chittle off with a kick to the ribs. Fawn swung hard with her blade, but the woman was gone instantly, back into the street, eyeing the human EP rifle. She fired the massive rifle with one hand at Chittle, killing her instantly. She handed it to a subordinate and then sent another woman after them. She sprinted with amazing speed and leapt onto the tank. Fawn locked arms with her, then swept her off beneath the treads of the tank, hurting more of pride than any physical damage. Fawn crouched low as they rode through an ally's line of fire and commanded Fletcher to cram inside the tank. She scrambled to the opening and stuck her head inside. 
Get us the fuck out of here, Fawn said. The women inside the tank were packed tight, with an extra body inside a tank that was supposed to hold three. They were quite uncomfortable. As the tank finally cleared most of the carnage, they came to the edges of the city. Fawn could see that the dawn was coming. A horizontal beam of orange was creeping beneath the night's purple. She heaved a sigh, just before more movement caught her eye. On the horizon, portals were bleeding men and women onto the planet's surface. The soldiers at the ground running, scrambling into the city. She looked to the rear once more and saw the red-headed woman was following them. Fawn nodded, seething that she and her team had been singled out by this insane woman. An urgent message came in on Fawn's antlers.